that set of uh, coefficients, one set of coefficients, using the first initial condition, right? First initial condition on all the a n. So the next one uh, exercise to find the uh, view those coefficients to be found, right? In the given series form, you see, given series will always give us b one, b two, b all the way to b n. Yeah, how do we find that? All the b n. So one more initial condition to be used here. The g function. That's another initial condition. So let's.
So all the terms will drop out except for the nth term. So you just put the, do the inner product both sides. Okay, so. Product with m, and this also the dx. The right hand side also in a product with m. With this uh, sine function, or the the m sine function. So the m sine function in a product with both sides of the equation. Then this even series will go, will all gone except for one term. So all the, all the other terms will come except for the nth term because of the psychometric. So what do we have here? This part. So, so we should decide one coefficient, right? Right. Don't are, worry about that. Are yeah. both those m's or one's m? Which one? Oh, this. Both are m. Both are m. Okay. Yeah, when they're equal, because if m with some other n, they will be zero, zero right? Zero. And yeah. So all the all the so this L, uh, L. Uh, term will in the product with uh, n. n right. can be one, n can be two, but they will be gone mm -hmm. except for the m term. Mm -hmm. So only that term will remain here. So that one is non zero. Yeah. This one is yeah. So this is the half of L, uh -huh. right? This is the half of L. So we can get this part which is a constant. How about L? And this part is just uh, depending on the G function. G is given, so we can take the this part also. For the given function, then you can just go ahead to the inner product. And now the BM, you see one more step, just divide the, yeah, divide, so let's cancel this. Uh, okay, so BM can be found as M plus C, 2, here. Okay, so the M, the first one, second one, all the set of B coefficients are found. So uh, using two initial conditions, right, we found the coefficients A and B and then we're done. Actually we found the solution in the series four and all the coefficients are determined using that calculation. Yeah, so we, uh, we just saw this wave equation we have equation with this boundary condition and and this uh, initial two initial conditions and we found the solution in the series form using separation variables. But you can try it yourself. Uh, so when you go home, you can change change the U for example the boundary condition. Uh, I just slightly modified, modified from this, modified boundary condition. So you can try this problem with the equation, same equation, same initial conditions with some given functions, right, as the initial conditions. Uh, just change this, take the derivative. With back to facial variable x. This uh, previously it was called the Richard boundary condition. This is called the Neumann boundary condition. Yeah. So this boundary condition, think if we have this slight difference, what will be different when you use separation variables again? You go through the whole process. Yeah. So which part will be uh, slightly different? Uh, it, the procedure is almost the same. Of finding out the like finding out the data would be different. Uh, this <coughs> before, right? Before. before already because this 
the phi, right? The boundary, uh, the second order ODE for phi, the function of x. Right. Yeah. So that boundary condition will be phi uh, derivative of so the console, the console. phi at yeah. zero. Yeah. Derivative of phi at L. So that will involve the derivative of phi for the boundary conditions. So what, yeah. what the, all that would do, so mm -hmm. if everything else was to stay the same, yeah. then all that would do would change that sign, n pi over Lx, that's right there? Yeah, all of that, then you will still, you need to solve that right. phi problem, because that one will be still the same equation, right? Yeah. But you have this first order derivative now for the boundary condition. Yeah. Uh, zero, L. Yeah, you see, that's the difference. Yeah, because this uh, has something to do with the spatial variable, right? So, phi, the boundary, very problem. This is a set ODE as a function of x. You are looking for phi, then that's the difference. But that still, you want to look at the lambda. It's three different cases. Yeah, when lambda is negative, zero, positive, then you will find out uh, when lambda is negative, um, only trivial solution. Still same as before. But when lambda is uh, zero, it's a valid solution. Yeah, it is. So for this case, you when lambda is zero or positive, you will get valid solutions, non-trivial. Yeah, you can find non-trivial solutions for those cases. <laughs> yeah, try this uh, yourself. Just almost uh, everything else will be the similar, very same, similar. Yeah, the process. But this part is different. So you still practice the eigenvalue problem with different boundary conditions. Yeah. <coughs> okay, let's uh, let's work on one. Actually. Yeah, exercise. Here's one specific problem. I just uh, changed the problem into specific. So the C is a constant, right? So let's do an uh, exercise. Uh, C is 1. C is a given constant, so let's make it 1. And here, this uh, length uh, is just from 0 to pi. Zero pi. So that's the interval for x. So that means, okay, so here that's the use of the condition which is zero to pi then, right? Yeah, so zero and pi. So we have boundary conditions. Initial condition, I will give you very specific f and t. Time. Let's try. Sign q x. Sign two x. So on this. <coughs> 